my Adore, my 64, my Commodore 64. Hi there, and welcome to a Let's Type episode from the Commodore 64 Appreciation Society. This is a series where I reach back into the past and type out a program from an old computer magazine, and then when I finish typing it in, I play it. I don't! You do! I don't! You do! I don't! You do! I don't! Stop! <laughs> Let's get in our time machine and go back to July 1988. Who Frame Roger Rabbit was hopping his way across the top of the box office, Cheap Trick was making all the girls swoon with the flame, and Nelson Mandela celebrated his 70th birthday with 600 million of his closest friends in a broadcast concert. Meanwhile, the editors over at Run Magazine were continuing to publish terrific articles, deep technical dives, and amazing type-ins for our favorite computer, the Commodore 64. I'll be honest, Run is a new magazine for me. Somehow it wasn't on my radar back in the 80s, which is a little embarrassing because it turns out this thing is packed. But between that and the number of requests I've had to finally cover it, this episode is honestly really exciting for me. For my first run type in, I picked a cool looking educational game called Alphabet Cadet. And let's just say it is educational, it's just that the lesson is mostly about suffering, but we'll get to that. So today we're going to type it in, try to survive it, and take a look at what I missed out on with run. Let's get started. Alphabet Cadet was written by John Ryan, an air traffic control instructor. So this guy obviously worked well under pressure and didn't miss a detail, which means I'm expecting some tight code and maybe some high stress situations. Looks like I picked the wrong week for smoking. He describes it as a vocabulary game that's exciting for the whole family and that it offers high challenge and competition. Honestly, I don't think I've ever heard an educational game get set up quite the same way. And I'll say this, I'm completely intrigued. There aren't any screenshots in the issue, but the art shows two fighter planes blasting letters in the sky. I'm getting 1942 vibes, which is a good thing, but mostly, I have no idea what to expect. Like pretty much every magazine back then, Run had a proofreader utility that helped readers enter their programs without errors. Run simply calls theirs Run's Checksum, and it works exactly as you'd expect. Once it's running, it stays resident in memory and outputs a small checksum value after each line you enter. If it matches the value printed in the magazine, you're good to go. And if it doesn't, you know there's an error to track down. Run's Checksum is actually their second version. The first was called Perfect Typist, and it's right on par with Compute's automatic proofreader, which is a very good thing. The order of characters matters, and spaces only count when they're inside quotes. As anyone who remembers typing in programs knows, tools like these are invaluable. <laughs> I feel like John Ryan would approve of this level of caution. It's just too stressful otherwise. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit drinking. Alphabet Cadet is set up in a really interesting way. The code is split into two distinct programs. The first is about 120 lines of basic that set up the game, manage scoring, and run the gameplay loop. But the actual game mechanics, mostly movement and sound, come from a second program that's almost entirely machine language. And here's the clever part. That program isn't actually part of the game itself. Instead, it just runs once, pokes all the machine code into memory, and then saves it out as a little binary file called cadet.obj. So, you pay the setup cost once, and after that, the main game can load the object instantly without having to poke all those values every time. It's a smart approach, and not something you see in a lot of type-ins. And honestly, breaking it into parts also makes it a lot more enjoyable to type in.
I can't believe I never read Run as a kid. I would have loved this magazine. It's entirely focused on the 64 and 128, and it has a super practical hands-on vibe. One of the best sections is called Magic, which shows up regularly. It's basically just a section full of tiny little code snippets that solve very useful problems. And I can't overstate how good these are. For example, here's one called Easy Typo Correction. It's an eight-line program, and it does something brilliant. Whenever your program hits an error, it immediately prints the line that caused it, so you can scroll right up, fix it, and keep going. I wrote a tiny program to show this off. And yeah, as soon as the error hits, it prints the line, I fix it, and we're back in business. So useful, and the magic section is packed with stuff like this in every issue. Teenage me would have been all over this. For this episode, I thought we'd try something new. I get a lot of requests to look at the code in more detail, and this is exactly what we'll do in the Code Spotlight. Let me know what you think in the comments. One of my favorite things about typing in basic programs is finding little routines or clever tricks that provide some insight into what the program is doing. There are plenty of those in a game as complicated as Alphabet Cadet, but there's one in particular that I wanted to highlight. These two lines do a surprising amount of heavy lifting. From the description and artwork, it's clear that words in the alphabet play a big role in the game. And we also know that a lot of the real work is being done in machine language. So at the beginning of each round, this routine takes the current word and prepares it in a form that the machine language code can use directly. Let's walk through it. These pokes are basically a setup message to the machine language routine. Location 820 tells it what job it's about to run, setup, gameplay, scoring, and so on. Location 822 tells it whether this is a one or a two player game, and 823 tells it how many letters are in the current word. In other words, before BASIC hands anything off, it first tells the machine code what it's doing and how much data to expect. And here's the really cool part. The second line prepares the word in a way that lets the machine language code handle it as efficiently as possible. MID pulls out one letter at a time, ASC converts it to its ASCII value, and subtracting 64 creates a simple mapping where A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, and so on. The POKE statement then drops those numbers into memory for the machine language routine to use. So why is this clever? Well, it's because machine language doesn't want to deal with text inside a real-time game loop. By converting the word just once at the start of the round, BASIC ensures the machine language code never has to reparse letters or normalize values every frame. Instead, it just reuses a pre-encoded table of numbers while it focuses on the time-critical stuff, animation, input, and sound. Small routine, big payoff. Cool, right? Alright, finally. I'm just finishing up with the second program and as usual, I'm really thankful for the proofreaders. Being able to type freely without having to worry about making a small mistake is a huge time save. I'd guess I'm about 25% faster with a proofreader than without. And done. These programs are pretty substantial for a type-in. The first one is 16 blocks or 4K, while the second machine language one is just over 6K at 25 blocks. Now that we're done, the first thing we need to do is run the second program, which, as a reminder, creates the binary data file from all of those data statements. So we'll just need to run this once. <laughs> or not. <laughs> this isn't good. I didn't run into any proofreading errors while typing, so hopefully I just missed a line. And yeah, that's exactly what it was. I somehow missed line 285 when typing in all those statements, so that's been re-added and I've saved the updated file. Cool, it worked. I'm so glad I didn't have to dive back into all those data statements. And now a quick directory listing shows us the cadet data file nicely compressed down to just 7 blocks, or just under 2k. Nice, so this should mean we're ready to play the game. Let's go! That's a fun effect on the letters in the title. And here we go. One player, enter my name, 
and we'll start off on easy. Cool, okay. The word for this round is horse, and I'm the red player. <laughs> it's like Space Invaders with falling letters. Holy, the computer is a great shot. Oh, I got the H. The controls are a bit off. I mean, my guy moves smoothly enough, but it's tough to quickly line up an accurate shot, and sometimes the firing doesn't work at all. I remember the instructions saying that you'll sometimes shoot blanks, so keep at it. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a bug or a feature. If it's a feature, it's not one I'd be advertising. And now the waiting game. We're both waiting for an O and an E. Oh, there's the E. Oh, come on. I'm stressing out waiting on a letter and the computer just casually yoinked it. Oh, there's my E. Now it's just down to the O. There it is. <laughs> of course. Man, is the computer ever good. Nice little score tally at the end of the round. Okay, round two. Oh, cool. I like how the press any key text falls off the screen like that. Nice touch. The word is popcorn. I can't believe how good the computer is. Is this supposed to be a game for young kids? If the letter appears anywhere close to the computer, it's almost guaranteed to get it. The controls are off just enough to make it really tough to act quickly. A problem the computer doesn't have to deal with. <laughs> I love how the 64's man just camps there. It's like a spider in a web, perfectly still before it strikes. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm just flailing away. It feels like I'm trying to swat a fly with a pool noodle. Now we're both looking for the letter P. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Spider 1, human 0. I skip forward to the next round, and we're right down to the wire. We both need the letter D to finish friend. The spider is camped out right in the middle, so I feel like my best chance is to keep moving and hopefully it appears close to me. <laughs> the stress is killing me. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. Oh, there it is. Come on. Nice. This feels like my gold medal moment. I'm still getting schooled, but I feel like I might have a chance now. <laughs> nope. I feel like I've pissed the spider off now, and it's just out for revenge. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, there was no way I was winning that one. Okay, so that round ended with me getting totally schooled. And then I got schooled again in the game after that, and then one more time for good measure. This game is tough. The biggest problem isn't even the controls or the occasional misfires. The computer is just so stupid fast and accurate. If a letter shows up anywhere close, it nabs it immediately. There's no room at all for error. <laughs> this game is educational, all right, and education and humility. Reading the instructions, John Ryan really stressed that playing against the computer is likely too difficult for young children. <laughs> I agree with you, John. He suggests that kids play as a single player in two player mode, which would allow them to move freely and complete the words without the competition. That definitely sounds closer to my speed. But all that said, I do think that this game would be a lot of fun with two players. Okay, I've played a couple more games now and I'm getting a bit better, but I haven't come close to beating the computer over five rounds yet. And remember, this is all on easy. Easy mode is a lie. <laughs> what does hard look like? It looks like this and it's insane. And to make hard mode even worse, your letters will disappear if you accidentally hit them again. 
I've been playing games a long time and I feel like I'm generally pretty good at them, but this one is well beyond me. I don't think this is something I'd fire up when I just want to relax for a few minutes, but I do think it would be an absolute blast to play against another person. At least then it's fair. I can see a lot of intensity, a lot of shouting, and a lot of laughs, which is kind of the whole point of games. And difficulty aside, credit where credit is due. John Ryan wrote a solid game, the concept is great, and it's a genuinely clever idea. It just needs a little balancing when you're playing against the computer. And as always, it was fun to type in an experience. That's what this is all about after all. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. And if you have any thoughts about Alphabet Cadet, Run Magazine, or about the new Code Spotlight feature, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Hope to see you again.